The Lord be with you. Today is All Saints Sunday, and as is our custom on All Saints Sunday, we remember those who have died in the past year, but we also remember all those who have been baptized in the past year. So we'll do that uh, at the first part of our service today. It's good to see you all here. Our gospel lesson is the Beatitudes according to Luke. So we'll find out what they mean for us today. Please rise. Today, on All Saints Sunday, we gather as saints, young and old, happy, sad, rich, and poor, as people who hunger and thirst for God's kingdom. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins before our God of mercy and grace. We have not believed you or trusted in your power. We have stained our souls by our action and inaction. We are broken by disease, bruised by the sins of others, weakened and unable to repair ourselves. We ignore your call to center our lives in you, and so are deaf to the hopes and cries of the poor, the sick, the needy, and the earth. Yes, we are sinners, but to sinners' ears come these words of good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. So yes, you are saints. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. And will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Let us pray. We bless you for the immeasurable greatness of your love, holy God, and for those who have died in the faith during the year. Larry Hopper, 
Mel Brooks, Ann Wilbur, James Lampy, Jean Strand, Harriet Smith, Louise Martin, Bruce Mueller, Jane Crisman, Norma Mueller, Karen Stiltner, Cindy Bass, and Lyle Dolly. Keep us also in your grace that with all the saints we may receive the glorious inheritance of eternal life. Amen. St. Paul wrote, For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we belong to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Let us pray. We thank you for the new life you have given us in baptism. We remember those who have been have become part of the communion of saints this past year through baptism. Henry Ojefo, Alex Boatwright, Amy Boatwright, Keith Boatwright, Harrison James Carroll, Sue M. Lee, Memphis Nesty, Miles Nesty, Farah Nesty, Willow Nesty. May we with them let our light so shine before others that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Lord be with you. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word that empowered by your spirit we may love one another and the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Revelations chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come up. So, how many of you know German? Do you know any words in German? Michaela? I think it's like babushka, and that's supposed to be my grandma or something. <laughs> babushka? That could be. Kazuntite. Very good. Kazuntite. God bless you. Here's another German word. Sein Zucht. Sein Zucht. And it's spelled S C H N S U C H T. Sein Zucht. Can everybody say that? Sein Zucht. Do you know what that word means? It's something that tells us that everyone has. Ethan, go ahead. <laughs> Don't, well, wouldn't it be nice if it meant children? But no. Here's what it means. It means a deep, profound longing that there's more. There's more. We should be getting more out of life. 
that there's more to happen to us. Now, you don't always realize that that's happening to you, that you have this deep longing that there's something more out there for me. And that's why Jesus said, Blessed are those who are poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Do you know why? Because they realize that longing is answered by God. So the cure for Zeinzucht is knowing that you need God. Okay? Knowing that you need God. Zeinzuk, don't forget it. I'm going to quiz you on it, all right? <laughs> Here we go. Let's have a prayer. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you that you sent Jesus to forgive us, but most importantly, to be with us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to realize our need for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. In case you didn't realize it, that was a prelude to what I'm about to say now. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Simply living, living life that really is life. So on this All Saints Sunday, it's good for us to look at the life that always is life. Let me begin with a uh, Halloween story. Young boy comes, maybe four years old, windy Halloween night, comes to the door by himself, rings the doorbell, a woman comes to the door, he says trick or treat, but he just holds out his hand and she goes, uh, she puts a treat in his hand and she goes, well, where's your bag? And he goes, oh, it was so heavy, mom's carrying it. And the woman goes, but you have a big S on your chest. Aren't you Superman? And he goes, well, yeah. To tell you the truth, these are my pajamas. I'm not really Superman. <laughs> well, today we celebrate the fact that we have S's on us. Every single one of us has an S for saint. A gift to us. You see, Lutherans use the word saint the way the Bible uses it to describe believers. Believers in God through Christ. So we're all saints. Um, a saint refers to all the faithful. I know we want to say, no, not me. I'm only human. But no, God makes you a saint. You belong to him. We're going to talk about that word, sein zucht, sein zucht, that German word that uh, refers to that deep longing it's a blessed longing. The, uh, some of the poets like Goethe and some of the German theologians picked up on Sein zucht as a human longing. It's described as the sense of deep, inconsolable longing, a yearning, the feeling of intensely missing something. We don't quite know what it is, but we're missing something. Sein zucht. 
soul longing. Now, I mentioned this at uh, Lyle Dolly's funeral. Uh, this is the day before Lyle died, and uh, he's holding up there. He was very proud of the fact that he voted. Voted the day before he died. Got in the mail the day before he died. So it's legal, but Lyle is one of those dead people who votes. I show you that to remind you to go vote. Uh, we don't tell people how to vote at this church. We think you're smart enough to figure that out. But you do need, you, you should, it's your duty as a citizen to go vote. So go vote on Tuesday if you haven't done so already. Could we call him St. Lyle? See, Lyle was one of those blessed poor that Jesus talked about. I had mentioned that uh, how poor was Lyle? Uh, his, his stepfather had that terrible disease we call alcoholism, where he spent all the family's extra funds, and he, sometimes even money they didn't have, on his addiction. So Lyle, and, and Lyle remembered a Christmas, a Christmas dinner, where they had a potato and they had water. So his mother made potato soup. That's how poor he was. Potato soup for Christmas dinner. Lyle, uh, and when they moved to a new apartment, it was, rather than a move up in life, it was often a step down. But Lyle knew this longing. And there's something about not having the world's goods that make sure we anchor ourselves not in this world and are yearning and longing for the things of this world, but we anchor it in the only place that is a safe place for our anchor, and that is in God. So Lyle, his family didn't go to church. He said they were good people, they were Christians, but they didn't go to church. But Lyle, even as a child, walked to church every Sunday to get to confirmation. Lyle walked to confirmation class every week. Lyle had this deep yearning for the kingdom of God. We could say Lyle was blessed for that reason. His family is, as we gathered around to talk about Lyle, uh, by the way, uh, there was a certain sweetness to Lyle when he lay dying. Uh, a week ago Monday, he thought it was his last day that God had told him he was going to die. And I went to visit him, and uh, it became clear to me that that was not the day. I said, Lyle, your communication was wrong. You're not going to go today. But uh, then Tuesday he was all right. Wednesday he had a terrible day. But Thursday he was back uh, alert, had a great smile on his face, was enjoying his family. Anytime I'd come into the room, he'd hold my hand. And he'd hold it the whole time I was there. There was a certain sweetness to him. No, no fear of death. He knew it was going to be any time, and he, he and I had that conversation. His family said he always seemed to live his life as though this world didn't matter. He was blessed. His poverty when he was young helped him in his blessed life. If only we could get to that point in our lives where we understood sign zooked, this longing, this universal longing we have for something more and realize God is the answer.
Hebrews talks about the communion of saints, all those people that surround us in our lives. All these died in faith. The writer is talking about all the people, all the Old Testament heroes died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on this earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. They desire a better country. Their Zion zukt was understood to be fulfilled in another country, a heavenly one, one that God prepared for them. Rick Warren, everybody know who Rick Warren is? Uh, the pastor of Saddleback Church in California. He wrote uh, tremendous runaway Christian bestsellers, The uh, Purpose Driven Church and The Purpose Driven Life. He suggested that there was a time, uh, by the way, son, a son of his committed suicide. His wife was diagnosed with a virulent form of breast cancer. And he was interviewed in an article. And he said, he talked about uh, how when his He wrote this, that uh, uh, he was being interviewed about his wife's cancer treatment. And he said that he admitted that he had tended to preach that if you did the right things and believed the right way, God would spare you from the worst that life could bring. And then he said, that he disavowed that theology. He said, I think I've done the right things. I think I've really done the things that God would expect any human to do. But look, a son commits suicide. A wife gets a terrible case of cancer. He said, God has to have something more in store. And that more is to help us finally grasp that our kingdom, our life, is not in this world, but it's in the kingdom of God which runs parallel to us. Martin Luther says we live with one foot in the kingdom of God and unfortunately one foot in this world. Our real life is realized in the kingdom of God. I'll end with this story. It comes from one of those chicken soup books. And Sue Fleshauer tells how she talks about the longing she had she and her sister were walking along a beach on a lake in Michigan. And as they were walking, there sticking in the mud is a crumpled up $20 bill, which her sister reached out and grabbed right away. And said, oh boy, $20. And sort of put it away. And Sue Flesh... Howard says, 
all I could think of is, don't I deserve part of that money? And just think what I could do with $10. All these things that she desired, that she thought were so good in this life. She said, as we walked along, I didn't have to worry about $10 because I found a crumpled up $20 bill. And then she goes, I spent that entire evening thinking of all the ways I would spend that $20 on myself. See, we, we, we get so caught up, we think all these worldly things that are going to fill that desire in our heart. But the poor can recognize as only being fulfilled and filled by God. So she said, the next day was Sunday, and the offering plate came around. And she was horrified to see her sister put $20 in the offering plate. And then she says, I'll never forget what my sister did, but I have no idea what I bought with that $20. Blessed are the poor and those who mourn and those who hurt because then we're more able to see this world ultimately is nothing. God is everything. So I hope you find a cure. Oh, by the way, there is nothing in this world which will ever satisfy our longing, nothing. No matter what we possess or achieve or accomplish, it will always leave us hankering for more. So when we leave here, I, I hope you're not wearing a shirt that says Superman on it, unless you're below a certain age. But Somewhere, you do have an S that stands for saints. And as God's saints, we trust God. Amen. I don't either. Four twenty six.
with all the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Glorious Maker, we sing your praises. You have formed us by your own hand. Increase our faith. Call us to service in your name. Inspire us to offer our lives to you each day in all the ways we live so that others may glorify you and give you praise. Let us pray. Have mercy. God of mercy, we pray for a greater awareness of your grace at work around us. Help us to give thanks and recognize your work in those who love us, forgive us, teach us, and call us to be our truest selves. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God of peace, we pray for your shalom, your peace. We pray for law enforcement everywhere, especially for the Des Moines, Iowa area community after two officers were brutally murdered. We pray for our country as we enter these last few days before the election. Guide us with wisdom. And we continue to pray for those who are fighting ISIS and other evils in the world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. God, our healer, we pray that you lift up people to provide care and consolation to those who are ill. And those suffering from any sickness, especially Janine Burnell Graves, Carolyn Callan, Jaden Cullors, Laura Connor, Jana Everett, Sophia Fledgley, Mary Lou Fisher, Randy Greenwood, Jesse Hansen, Kelsey Cooper, Dennis Holmes, Janet Littlecrow, Chris Marquardt, Lori Pettit, Sean Snellen, Chris Snyder, Rita St. Jimmy, Lucy Stilwell, Paul Thompson, Bennett Wilkerson, Kathy Zinter, Marietta Young, and Falma Sadowski. Are there any others? Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Lyle Dolly, of Randall Long, of Edith Larkin. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Almighty God, you have promised to hear those who call upon your name. We commend all our spoken and silent prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Gracious God, we give you thanks. Thanks that you indeed are our God and gift us with so many great gifts in this life. We thank you for the pledge cards that are in this box. We pray that you multiply them, those pledges, the sacrificial gift of the, gifts of the saints, to meet the needs of your ministry among us. And we pray that you bo bless both the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should in all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who died on this day and overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We give you thanks, shepherding God, that you have gathered your scattered flock again this day, feeding us richly with the food of paradise. Accompany us as we serve you all the days of our lives, and gather us with the saints in the day of our death, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Don't forget that on Thanksgiving Eve, we have a worship service here at 7 o'clock. And it's followed by a pie fellowship, I guess we would call it. We gather around pie. So um, uh, don't forget that's happening. That's all I really need to announce. Do we have any other announcements? Read your messenger. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources.